Uh, I'm very, very excited about this topic because I think that fear is probably a monster in most people's lives. You, you've given time to fear and it's just sucked it up and you've got nothing out of it. <laughs> it's probably a big pain for most people. They should probably be fed up with it the same way they're fed up with sitting in their houses and not getting to do anything and having to wear masks everywhere they go. It's uh, a pain and it is an opponent. Well, there might be some good to it. We'll look at that. But uh, let's be honest, it, it's not fun. It's something that we go through. Uh, I, I imagine that some of us have days where they wake up and they're so prone to worry and anxiety, they literally cannot get out of the bed. They just say, this, this day is done, and they throw the covers over their head, and they go back to sleep because it's just too much, the things that are plagued with. Others think, hey, fear is great. You know why it's great? Because I wouldn't be a success without it, okay? So you'll meet people just like this. I use fear, they say, and fear has caused me to do uh, all the things that I was supposed to do, and now I'm successful, and I like fear. And um, sometimes I lose all the energy in my body, and I have to lie down, and I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack, but hey, everything's fine, <laughs> okay? And then uh, still others of us, uh, we, we don't think fear is a problem for us, but there is this one thing that we think about a lot, and we can't seem to shake it. And we say, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about that anymore. And then we worry about it again. I'm not going to be bothered by that. And sometimes what we're bothered by is a little bit like our list there. It's like everybody else says, that's weird. You're afraid of water? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it just, it really gets to us. And everybody else goes, well, that's strange for, for, for us. That would be odd. But for you, it's very real. And you don't know how to get out of it. You don't know how to get out of it. But my point here is uh, there's something that maybe we can all take this morning. We'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, but I imagine that we're all a bit more anxious during uh, the season that we're in. COVID-19, at least we started out anxious. And then also, some of us are still anxious in the form of saying, I'm fed up, I'm done, I'm not even caring anymore. That's also about anxiousness. I want to let go of feeling anxious, so I'm going to throw it all out. But then you're secretly still anxious about it. That's why you're reacting that way. Uh, so there's something for everyone this morning, I think. Um just this morning, actually, I was noticing that the, uh, the, the, the news was that we've had the highest number of cases on a Saturday ever. So we, we passed the 12,000 uh, case number this morning, which was a big jump. They were saying six yesterday. Now it's 12. Um, and so uh, this is a continuing issue for us. So what I'd like to do this morning is I want to make some general statements first about anxiety and fear in the Bible. I have three things to say there. And then I want to talk about a possible remedy to fear. And then at the end, there's a little Q&A time in case you feel like I didn't address what you were asking. I probably won't address some of it, but I think that's a, po a possibility for you to mention it there. So I'm gonna try to be timely. Um, and, and so I think we'll be able to really look at this. And I think there's some very good, hopeful things for you who feel fearful. So let's start with occurrences. How often do we find the words fear and anxiety and worry? How often does that occur in the Bible? Any guesses? Any guesses? No? More than 100 times? More than 500 times? More than 1,000 times? Just slightly under 1,000 occurrences, okay? Just slightly under 1,000 uh, occurrences. So this is a lot for the Bible. This is a lot of occurrences for, that's a major theme in the Bible. That's one of the biggest themes apparently is about fear, okay? And this, the reason for this, the reason for the high occurrences is because we, you know, what the Bible is saying, this is, this is here because this is a real thing for us. That, that whether we say we're fearful people or we say we're, I'm not a fearful person, Whatever it is that we say, the truth is we really, really struggle with fear. That's why it's all over the Bible. Because it, it, it's God's way of trying to address a need that you really have. He thinks that you can't deal with fear. Otherwise, he wouldn't include anything on this subject. He really thinks you need to hear something about this. Now, uh, I would say, oh, that's silly. I mean, when I was growing up, I was fearless. This is what I would say. I was fearless. In fact, um, uh, I, I shared this story, by the way, which is funny that you would share a story like this. I, I shared the story that 
I once was, uh, it was dark outside. I was living up in the mountains and I looked outside and there was a bear and the bear had tackled some sort of prey in my backyard. And I thought I need to scare it away. So I opened the door of my house and I ran after the bear and I screamed, ah, and I threw a brick at it. Okay. This is the sort of stupid thing I would say. Like, I'm not even afraid to die. That's what I would say. Who cares? Uh, and then I would look at down at people who were fearful. And I would scoff and I'd say, what, what's your problem? Get over it, Nate. Why are you so bothered? What a drag. My mother tended to worry about things and I would laugh at her inwardly. And so I just, I just say, oh, I'm a low key guy. I'm not worried about anything. I really don't think any, anybody should worry about anything. And what's your problem if you do worry about stuff? I mean, what's wrong with you? But you know what? That was all a bit of an act, okay? I, I really was quote low key in some things. But there were other things that I was truly frightened of. I spent so much time worrying about what people thought of me. It was ridiculous. The amount of time that I would spend obsessing over different things that I said and how people could react. And I was just absolutely terrified. Uh, and then something else, you know, so I had this persona going, but I actually had a problem myself. And, and then something else happened. Um, you know, fears grow over time. And so uh, when I was like 20, someone said, oh, I'm training to become a doctor. Can I take your, uh, your blood pressure? And it was, quote, high in their estimation. And this began a, a time of like always being afraid. Is my heart doing okay? Is it, I'm going to come back. Have anyone else done this? Think I'm okay. Think I'm one, two, three, four, five. Ah! Right? I, I started to become obsessed. I went to the doctor's office. I, I, I would worry about it all the time. And actually, fear tends to grow in the life of every individual. So we start out pretty okay, and then something bad happens, and we become more fearful. And then that fear just balloons and grows and grows and grows. And perhaps in your life today, there's a fear that is out of control. Well, guess what? All of this is pretty normal for human beings. The Bible says we have fear issues. That's why it occurs. And so it's normal. And God can really help us with that. All right, so the second thing I want to, uh, to say about the Bible, what it says about fear, is that not all fear is bad. Not all fear is bad. We talked about this. So uh, fear, you have this adrenaline response. Your heart starts beating faster. You're, you're more connected with what's going on. And so often when you feel that feeling of fear, guess what you do? You jump out of the way of the lorry just in time. That's what you do, right? It, it kicks in to save your life, or you stay a bit further away from that cliff or uh, you take precautions. Also, some other fears that are good. Um, fears, you, you, you may be fearing about the future because you've done no planning. And it's, it's good, a good response of fear is, maybe I ought to sit down and think about this for 30 minutes, not fearfully think about it, just do some planning, uh, make some steps. That, that's, that's called diligence, that's, that's good. Sometimes you fear certain people, you know they have authority and this isn't a bad thing. There's lots of fears that are good, uh, that it can benefit you. And so not all fear is bad. There's a reason that God gave us fear. It's, a, it's an out of control Frankenstein beast in our lives, but it has a good feature sometimes. Sometimes it's good. Uh, the Bible uh, gives several instances of good fears, but it also talks about the best one is the fear of the Lord, okay? The fear of the Lord. Uh, and, and, Actually, we're going to be starting a, uh, uh, a series in the book of Proverbs. Uh, and if you're watching, you'd like to join us, that would be lovely. But the theme verse in Proverbs is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You don't have any wisdom at all until you have this good fear, this fear of the Lord. Well, that's not so much talking about like a feeling of terror as... Um, as kind of this proper and appropriate response to this notion that God controls everything, made everything, holds your life, holds every second, and you're talking with God. So maybe you ought to do that in an, an appropriate and humbled way. That's, that's really what the fear of the Lord is about. It's, um, it's the same as, uh, like, if you think about the sun. Uh, who likes the sun here? I love the sun. Why? Because it gives us... Uh, it, it sets everything in motion. It causes things to grow. It, it controls the water cycle. I mean, it provides for wonderful things. And yet, I would not look directly at the sun. Because even though it's an amazing thing, it also requires respect. 
A um, couple other ideas. Uh, we, we are fearful, we respect our uh, regulations on the road. So if I see a stoplight and it's red, I fear just flying through it, both because there's a camera that will catch me on every single uh, <laughs> corner you can find, but also uh, because if I do pass on a red, I could be hit by another vehicle. That's why it's there. I have respect for that. Or uh, if, if you go to Cornwall or Dover, right? And there you are walking on the cliff, that moment of, <gasps> right? Uh, I'm not gonna get too close to the edge here. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a proper respect. Just recently, people were diving off of rocks into very shallow water, and they thought that was cool. The water will catch them, and uh, they did not fear that, and they didn't think the water is going to be deep enough. And so some people hurt themselves. Some people are trying to take selfies on the corner of, of Dover, on the edge of the cliff, and, and they fall over. They don't have proper respect. That's the sort of fear that God is talking about when he talks about the fear of the Lord, respecting, respecting. But interestingly enough, this fear is to lead us to fearlessness. The fear of the Lord is to lead us to never be afraid again. Uh, because as we carefully and humbly come to God as uh, created beings that he loves and as sinners that need grace, God just showers us with his mercy and grace. And then we don't need to be afraid anymore because we're accepted by him, fully accepted. And there's this uh, lovely... Uh, illustration of this. If you guys have seen um, Nature Docs, if you've seen an Ad Edinburgh um, the special, the, the mother lion introduces the cubs to the daddy lion, right? And the cubs are properly terrified. I mean, they are scared of daddy lion. But after the introduction is over, uh, the inhibitions go away, right? They start playing on top of daddy, patting daddy in the face, right? <laughs> Wagging the tail, swatting the tail. They're not afraid anymore. And this is what happens with Christians too. They have this proper respect. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But then there's this verse that says, um, perfect love or mature love or completed love casts out all fear. It's like we know that we are received by God and we're not scared anymore. All right, so there are good fears. That's the healthy fear. But thirdly, the vast majority of the Bible talks about fears in a negative way, okay? Most fears in the Bible are negative. Most fears in the Bible are negative. Not good, not good at all. And so we actually talked in our groups about uh, when fears become bad. And uh, the answer that I want to give you is actually when you continue in it. When you continue in your fear, when you dwell on your fear, then it becomes something else it was never intended to be and so the bible when it most often talks about fear it tells you to stop fearing when it says do not fear what it's saying is stop fearing and the idea is you've begun a process of fear that is continuing to this very moment and god says now you stop that right stop this cycle of fear cycle of fear where we begin to fear and then we continue in fear and then we continue in fear, and it goes all the way around, and we never quite get anywhere with it, and then it starts over again, and we have this cycle that is just doing nothing, the cycle of fear, and we call that cycle of fear worry, and anxiety, and stress is created through this, yeah, worry and anxiety can't change anything, we generally, the fears that are in this category, we can't do anything about it's not something where we could actually sit down and do a little planning and everything will be better. It's something where no matter how much we do anything, it's uncontrollable in our life. It's not going to change one bit. <laughs> and so uh, no amount of thinking or action or fear will change that. And so it's kind of like turning a doorknob. You know, you're trying to get into the door and you're turning it and you're turning it and you're pushing and nothing is happening because the door is like, it's, it's been ironed shut. There's no way that anything is going to change, and yet you keep on with the motion of trying to get through this. Or um, trying to screw in a screw that's threadbare, you know? I'm going to get this to work, stupid thing, right? And nothing is happening. It's spinning your wheels, but you're not going anywhere. And God says this is terrible, and we need to stop it. It's, uh, it's devastating to the human body. So physiologically, uh, we are not meant to feel adrenaline in our body all the time. This is not a good thing for your health. Um, and I, I know all about this. Uh, I, I, uh, just both because of fear 
uh, and the pressure that is put upon me when I was younger as a pastor, I just tried to say, okay, I have this deadline, this deadline, this deadline, and I would work near nonstop trying to get all of it done. And I remember once I was at a supermarket, <laughs> and uh, actually after I was done with these big events, like the sermon or the time with the youth when I'm putting together something, I would have this strange kind of darkness around the corners of my eyes. You know, what's going on? And so I would have to sit down usually. And, and uh, anyway, after uh, one particular sermon, I, I went to go uh, get some food at the, the market. And, it, and I, the, the, the strange darkness around the eyes started. And, and I was like, oh, I'm going to pass out. And so I lay down in the middle of the market. And uh, I was actually on the phone with somebody. And they're like, are you okay? What's going on? What's going on? Uh, and... <laughs> I, I just lost all energy. And it's because we're not meant to have this sort of adrenaline running through our bodies all the time. And we're not meant to live in fear. Uh, it causes sores and aches in your arms and in your legs and your shoulders and your jaws. It, it causes a tightness in your chest. You start to think, am I having a heart attack? Am I having a heart attack? If you continue in fear, you actually probably will have a heart attack, right? If you're fearing all the time, it's taken and drastically shortened people's lives. And chances are in this room and online, people who are watching this, there will be someone in this group who will be very, very fearful. Maybe they'll apply this and their life may go a tiny bit differently and, and be better. And I think that's, we'll get to that. But it could drastically shorten their life. Fear could drastically shorten their life. And God doesn't want that for you. Okay, with that in mind, let's talk about a potential remedy. Uh, let's look at Jesus' word. So this is Matthew uh, chapter 6. I hope none of you have been deceived and thought that we are just going to have a nice chat about faith. We're going to look at the Bible. We believe that this document is uh, life-changing uh, and that God really wants to tell us good things that will help us and set us on the right course. So this is Matthew chapter 6, and I'm just going to start in verse 25, uh, and this is what it says. It's on page 971 for those of you who have uh, yeah, uh, uh, your Bibles in front of you. Um, and if you don't have your Bible in front of you, let me just hand one off to you. So I see somebody does it. So have a second. There. So, all right. So page 971. Uh, and we're, I think we're in verse 25, I said. Yes. Here's what it says. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about your clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. Your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. They'll be added unto you. So uh, as we look at this, I wish we had time to really develop this in a bit full-blown sermon, but I'm just going to point out some uh, high level ideas. And the first one is uh, that God is with us. I, I could worry, but before I do, I remember that God is my father. If God is your father, we'll talk about that, right? I, I could worry, but before I do, I remember that God is my father. Uh, now, so if you look at this passage, it's the word God. Look at how many times the word God comes up and look at how many times the word Heavenly Father comes up. You have somebody there to help you with what you're feeling fearful about. That's what it is. Do you have a fear? You also have a God. Do you have a fear? You also have a God. And so you're not alone. You're not alone in your fear. God is your advocate. God is your advocate. Uh, and look, so Jesus just illustrates this for us. He says, look, look what God is doing for those birds that you don't notice and those plants that you never look at. That Nobody cares about the birds. Nobody cares about the plants. You might go bird watching every once in a while, but you're not invested in them. You're certainly not invested in the grass that you see out on the, 
uh, on, on the, the, the greenery out here. You don't, you don't care. You don't even think about it. Every once in a while, you look up and say, oh, that's nice. But God cares. <laughs> and so uh, the birds don't do anything, and God gives them food. And the grass doesn't do anything. And God dresses the grass up beautifully. And then God says, well, won't I do that for my children? You who are worrying about food and clothing, won't I take care of you? Don't, don't you think I'm a good father? You are not alone in your fears. And look, it says uh, the pagans, that is somebody who does not believe in God. What did they do? All day long, they worry. All day long, they're terrified about how they're going to get food, how they get clothing, how they're going to be successful, what people think about them. They just obsess over these things. And it's because they have no God to turn to. There's no one controlling their situation. There's no heavenly father, but we have a heavenly father. That is if we believe in him. And so that is how we begin to get out of our worry. I want you to imagine that you are doing whatever it is you're doing and you're doing so fearfully. But if you could just look back and imagine yourself as the child and there's dad right there to make sure it's going to go well. We have a hovering parent of a God in our life. He is looking after us. Um, Ezra, you know, he's hungry and he just assumes we're going to feed him and clothe him and take care of him and help him to have as much fun as is humanly possible. I mean, literally, he's upset if he doesn't have fun at almost all hours of the day. And you know what? We're happy for that to be the case. We love him. And we even go further than that. We have big dreams for him to be everything that he's meant to be. God feels that way about you. God feels the way about you. And so you can relax in your fear. There is a reason for everything that you're going through. And there is also a God who intends to take action to direct you to the right destination. You don't have to worry. Sometimes people talk about the will of God, like, um, let's find the will of God. Oh, what if we don't know what it is, we might miss it. No, no, see, God is for you. He's there to help you. He doesn't want to just throw some strange ideas at your way. And if you don't figure it out, then sorry, you, you're not with the program and it's not going to go well for you. He loves you as a father and he's directing you like any parent would. Any parent would. Um, I, uh, I once went camping with a friend and uh, he had bought a hot rod and I was very excited to see this beautiful car. So I drove up with him to go camping Along the way, he decided he wanted to race with my other friend. And so we began racing on a gravel road up in the middle of the mountains. Uh, we took a turn, blind turn, just a sort of stupid thing. I was young, okay? <laughs> took a blind turn, came around the corner, the road narrowed, and there was another car coming, and it was 80 feet ahead, <laughs> okay? And into my head wafts the idea, are you going to die? And that's what I thought. Are you going to die? And a little voice said, and I don't think it was my voice. You're going to be just fine. That's what I remember that moment. You're going to be just fine. Actually, it went into slow motion. Am I going to die? You'll be just fine. My friend jammed his foot on the brake so hard, the car went and did multiple 360s in a row. And that motion stopped the acceleration of the vehicle. And the back end of the vehicle hit the front end of the car that was coming. And it was a minor fender bender. And actually, we were able to drive up and have the rest of our camp and everything. Uh, our God is the God that knows the exact dust on the road, the exact gravels, the tire tread, the angle of the hand steering the vehicle, everything perfectly for our good, for our good. Now, listen, there's a couple caveats on this. This does not mean that we don't have to plan, right? Because God will take care of it, we say. We don't have to plan. Uh, no, it means that we can plan, but we can plan knowing that God is with us and he'll help us. So there's no call here to just stop planning and just let the Holy Spirit. I don't come up here and say, Holy Spirit, lead me. I haven't done any study. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you shouldn't live your life that way. Do your planning. Um, second, it doesn't mean that we're going to live long on this earth. It's actually quite a bit more holistic than that. God intends to bring us to a place where we never fear anything again. And, and that place has a word. And the word is shalom. P 
peace. If you think about what peace is, peace is I have no worries. I have nothing that has to be done or everything is going to go wrong. I have no more fears anymore. Now, Jesus, before he was to die on the cross, he said to the disciples, to his followers, to the children of God, he said, my peace I give to you. And do you know what his words are when he rises from the dead? Peace to you. So God, what he wants to do isn't necessarily that your life would continue on on this earth forever, particularly because heaven is much better than here. And if you know him, that's where we're going. Uh, it's so that we would be in a place of peace forever. This is actually why Jesus came. So the things that you fear, just to put this in perspective, the things that you fear, it is the stated purpose of God that he would relieve you of that and that you would dwell in peace forever. So before, let's remember what we've done. We, we, before we fear, we remember God's love. But then also I think we need to do something else. We need to replace that fear with something else. Look at verse 33, the only verse that we're really focusing on this morning. Verse 33. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. When you are given something, you don't earn that thing. You don't take hold of it yourself and say, I got it, <laughs> right? So what God is saying is, listen, I don't want you to fear anymore. I, I want you to trust me. Yes, yes, you could plan. Trust me. Trust that I'm working. But particularly, I want you to change your focus. I want you to live for the kingdom and stop worrying about that. Just just stop worrying about that because I have something better for you. Kingdom work. And oh, by the way, if you'll do that, I'll just take care of these things that you're worried about. Don't worry. Just, just leave that in my hands, right? And, and so there's this promise here. Not only do we remember that God loves us and he's with us and he wants these things for us, but we also remember, okay, time to change focus. I'm going to live for the kingdom now. And through that process, God says, I'll just take care of those things. Now, we, we still do our planning, but we don't do it with worried and anxious hearts. We do it knowing God is going to provide. Now, uh, let's stick with this idea for a moment, and I want to flesh out two ideas for you. I would naturally worry, but first I remember God's love, and I focus instead on his kingdom. Okay, so that's the, the last phrase that you fill in there. I would naturally worry, but first I remember God's love, and I focus instead on kingdom work. That's the way out of fear, I think. A couple caveats. Uh, some of you listening this morning are hoping that I'm just going to give you some practical tips on not being fearful. And this whole trusting God bit is a little bit obnoxious. Can, is there any way that I can stop fearing just on my own? And I hope that you understand that that really won't work. Why? Because you're afraid of uncontrollable things. And if there is no God, or if you're not trusting that God, well, it's still uncontrollable, <laughs> right? If you will not if you will not countenance God, you will say, uh, you know what? I have fears, but I just want to get a handle on them. And, and the fears are things that I can't control and, and nobody can control them actually. Well, there's no way you're going to get out of that fear, is there? You need this higher authority in your life. You need to know that God is on your side. You need to know that God is your father. And so I just, I, as much as I would like to give you some helpful tips that maybe you just do this or that and you'll stop fearing more. What you really need is that appropriate relationship with the Lord. And so I encourage you for that. That Jesus has died for your sins. He loves you. He wants to bring you peace. Uh, but you need to encounter that. And there's no way to get out of your fears just by thinking your way through it. Because God is actually in control of those things. Now, um, the second thing is I want to talk about making this practical. This has been a fun talk. But it's dangerous that we walk away and not apply any of this. So here's a couple applications. When you start feeling fearful, do this. One, have I done my due diligence? Okay, tell yourself, have I done my due diligence? And if you have, great. Uh, and if you haven't, maybe set some time to, to do so and stop worrying, yeah? Set some time to do it. Maybe that time is right then. Set some time and work on it. Uh, but if you've done your due diligence, number two, I, I tell yourself, I don't, I must not be afraid of this. I don't need to be afraid of this uh, because God loves me. He's watching after me, Okay. And then the third thing you do is say, actually, though, I have a mission. 
I'm supposed to be living for the kingdom of God. I'm too busy being preoccupied with my work that God has given me to worry about this other thing. How can I love somebody right now? How can I serve God right now? How can I get back on mission? See, what's really happened is I've been distracted with fear from my mission, and I'm going to get back. And see, what that will do is it will, it will break the fear cycle. Because the fear cycle, is to, it, 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 the, the, the danger of it is, is it, there's no answer in it, so you just keep going around and around and around. You, you can't get to the answer when you're in the fear cycle. Oh, I'm so worried, I'm so worried. And, but then you can't fix anything. And so the way to break that is with a different cycle, and that's the faith cycle. And that very moment where you're beginning to feel anxious, you say, actually, though, I'm loved, I'm wanted, I have a mission, and I'm going to go about that. And you'll break that slowly over time. You'll inch forward. You'll grow a bit. You'll become less anxious. It may not be a huge move, but there will be something. Okay? Now, um... I haven't answered all your questions and a whole lot of them that I'm sure there are. Um, lots to discuss. I'm sure someone might think, well, what about me? I've been really struggling. It hasn't really helped much. Uh, or what about people who take medication? Is that okay? We can talk about all that in a minute. But for now, let's think about this. We're loved of God. He wants to help us. He's our father if we trust him. And we have a mission and we can use that to let go of our fears.